Okay, uh, assalamualaikum and very good uh, morning to all. Okay, today we will continue our next lecture. Okay, which is on the subject automatic control. Uh, EMC 322, which is on the lecture number 4 for the introduction to PID controller and its applications. So basically, you have already know how to plot the root locus for the passive and active control system which a proportional control gain so this one is more advanced control which is we call it a PID controller so from this also you can plot the root locus and know the stability of the your uh, of the system okay okay so uh, basically uh, this is the last lecture okay uh, on my parts which is uh, later on after the class you will given the Another assignment which is on the simulations, okay, so that you can plot the uh, control system using a, a MATLAB software. Uh, and for the uh, final week 15, so we will have an allocation for you to do the, your simulation works, and uh, we have the test number three yeah, on my part, okay. Okay, so as an overview, uh, the first part is on the introduction to PID controller and the example which the root locus. The second part is on the PID controller tuning methods. And finally, it's a Ziegler-Nichols approach. This is another uh, tuning method that is a more strategized tuning method for the PID controller. Okay, uh, as a brief before this, this is the for the active control system you have this body diagram okay and for the reduced transfer function previously we just use a proportional gain which is k uh, but for this one we can replace the k as a pid controller which is involved for kp ki and kd gains okay so it will provide a more accurate uh, vibration attenuation or any uh, targeted control system so we just replace back our system which uh, this GC okay as is represent a PID controller okay so for the next one okay uh, so the PID controller is a form of controller that widely been used in industrial process control which are using a T three terms which is P I and D okay. So the controller has the transfer function. This is the transfer function, okay, where we have a proportional, the Kp, the Ki is the integral, so that we have a 1 over S here because it's integrate, and the Kd is multiplied by S, which is on the derivative, okay. So the equation for this PID controller in terms of time domain can be shown as below, which is Kp directly multiplied by the error of the system. Ki is multiplied by the integration of the error and finally the Kd is multiplied by the derivative of the uh, error. Okay, so the three terms controller is called PID because it's contain a proportional K, Kp, integral Ki and derivative Kd. Okay, so the PI uh, the transfer function for the derivative term is actually call it as a GDS which is in this form okay which is involve a KD parameter multiplied by S and we have the time for the uh, uh, derivative controller which is TD but the TD is usually smaller than the time constant okay which is uh, lower than the time constant of the control system uh, so or the process so that it can be neglected lah, okay so if we set the KD equal to 0, then we have a proportional plus integral only, which is in this form. Okay, GC equal to KP plus KI over S. And another case where if we have a KI equal to 0, so that we have a term of only KP and KD multiplied by S. Okay, so this is called a PI controller and this is called a PD controller based on uh, what the parameters that you use. Okay. Okay, the next one is on complete PID controller. Okay, so we have this form, okay, which is KP, KI over S, and KD multiplied by S as shown before. 
and if we have a solution of this we can trans uh, have a more uh, appropriate uh, forms okay like this okay so this is actually the most uh, uh, wanted uh, form uh, in if you want to solve this problem okay so if you transfer in this form okay as o of 2 plus a s plus b so that is easily for you to transform it into a, a transfer function and you can show it uh, and code it in the MATLAB okay as shown in previous lecture okay so actually uh, this a is actually a uh, equal to kp divided by kd okay, from these equations and b is actually equal to kd multiplied by aki multiplied by kd so if you get a value of uh, kd for example so actually you can also get uh, and also you get the value of a and b so that you can determine the value of ki and also kp okay i will show you after this so uh, this is another form when you can show in terms of poles and uh, sorry in terms of zeros and poles okay so basically for the PID controller uh, the transfer function have only one pulse at the origin here zero and two zeros that can be allocated anywhere in the s-plane for example start from zeros here okay so uh, you can uh, also have a plot of Based on the KD value, it can go anywhere to the two zeros value, okay? Starting from the poles. Okay, so uh, let's see the example here, okay? So always uh, re remember that the root locus begins at the poles and end at the zeros, okay? If we have given this unity feedback system of transfer function, GS, okay? Okay, you will have a solution at the de uh, denominator is s o of 2 plus uh, 5s plus 6 okay and also the controls pid control system okay uh, gcs okay is as given in the previous uh, slide okay so you can solve on this uh, root locus of the active system okay so this is the, the general active uh, control system that i showed you previously so if you get in this form, so it can be transformed as a M, C, and K system, which is this M, C, and K as shown in this, okay? So let's say we have the solution of, uh, sorry, uh, solution of the complex zeros, okay? The Z1, Z1, and Z2 in terms of this, okay? 3 plus j and uh, minus 3 uh, sorry uh, 3 minus j okay this is a f minus because we assume it's a minus uh, poles okay so that we have a minus here okay but in case of a uh, z we can have directly a plus 3 plus j yeah? okay so how to have the solution on this okay so as usual you use the characters equation okay 1 plus gs multiplied by uh, gcs multiplied by gs so that you can have a more uh, proper solution like this okay so in this one okay you replace the uh, the z1 and z2 here okay as given in the previous equation or basically you can also show it in terms of Okay, so uh, previously we have a KD, okay, is the S O of 2 plus AS plus B, okay, and we divide by the S, S plus 2, and S plus 3, okay. So here we know that we have a 3 poles, okay, S0, minus 2, and minus 3, and in this form, okay, you can also show, okay, as the A and B. Okay, so actually A is the Z1 plus Z2 and B is a Z1 multiplied by Z2. Okay, this is actually is better form for you to uh, translate in terms of uh, MATLAB uh, programming later on. Okay, 
Okay, as the KD gain is increased, the complex roads will approach the zeros. Eh? So we can see this is the solution. Okay, we start from the we have three poles: zero, minus two, and minus three. Okay, as shown here. Okay, so uh, when it's move, this will move to the left, and this moves to the right, and also this poles because they are S1, S2, and S3 here. Okay, so this is the breakaway points. Okay, where they separate in two uh, roads, where both is approaching the uh, Z1 and Z2 value. Okay, so this is how you can plot the uh, road lockers for the PID controller. Okay, so let's see in the solution of the MATLAB. Okay, maybe I can show you on this one. Okay, so. Okay, let's see. We have this MATLAB. Okay, as usual, I already done it, but I can recall it back for the system. Okay, so you have a Z1. Okay, 3 plus J. Okay, as given before. Here, Z1, 3 plus J. Okay, and also the Z2 is 3 minus j or minus i okay so uh, we have a solution of this a z1 plus z2 is equal to 6 and b z1 divided by z2 is a 10 so as shown previously if we have the solution of a here and b so that we know it we can also be, if we get the value of kd so that we can also get the value of K I N K P. Okay, so by that we can have a, a transfer function which is actually one K okay, A B and one five six zero. Okay, actually this system is a, a third order system. Okay, as shown previously, okay you have a, a Z one plus Z two here. Okay. okay, this is the, the solution lah. at the below part. If you have this solution, S multiply by uh, S plus 2 and S plus T, actually you get the solution in terms of S, the power of 3 plus 5S, power of 2, 6S plus 0. Okay, and for the numerator, okay, since you already get the value of uh, A and B here, so you can directly shown in terms of this one okay you can have a solution the upper part okay which is actually one uh, s power of two plus six s plus ten okay because you already know the value of uh, this one lah, okay one six and ten okay so from that uh, you can plot the locus okay Okay, so now we can confirm the value here. Okay, so it start with a uh, pulse of 0, minus 2 and minus 3. Okay, so this one uh, will go into the, this asymptotes, okay, which are uh, going to the breakaway point, and one will go into the zeros here, okay, which is actually minus 3, okay, plus j and minus 3 minus j okay so uh, this is you can confirm the value here lah, okay so here i have already write uh, and show some of the detailed information for example okay this one this three actually is a pulse zero minus two and minus three okay it's going to the zeros here so that you have a pulse minus three plus I can okay, also the other below part which is minus 3 minus I okay so this is confirmed that your your plot is correct okay okay so the next one is on the what is the advantage of the PID controller and how it can be implemented in the industrial process okay so basically by using the PID controller the system response will become more attractive okay and benefit to the 
to the standing of the system. Okay, so the pres the percentage of of, of uh, overshoot to the step will be less than two. Okay, let's say we have a target response of one here. Okay, okay, from the zero, okay, it will have a of course the overshoot. Okay, and this is basically you can reduce to ten percent. Okay, from the target output, and the steady state error. Uh, will be zero lah, okay as uh, there's no error uh, at the after the settling time okay so that's we consider the steady state error will be zero okay the settling time will be approximately at the one second here so at the basically t equal to one second the system can be stabilized if a shorter settling time is desired then we select the z1 and z2 to be left for the left in the left hand of the s plane and the KD drive to uh, near to the root of compact zero. Okay, so by deciding the value of K is uh, near uh, for the left here and near to the complex uh, zero, uh, so that we can have a better response. Okay. Okay, so basically many industrial process are controlled by the controller. For example, your if you have uh, experience in uh, riding a vehicle driving a vehicle with the auto cruise speed so that's even though the roads uh, is going upwards and downwards okay okay you, you realize that the the speed is constant because the spid controller that uh, can always correct the speeds of the vehicle to maintain even though it's going upward and downwards also, the pressure level impact, okay, basically in most of the oil and gas application industry, okay, they need to, to maintain the pressure uh, in the pipe, okay, uh, while uh, drilling, for example, so that uh, it can sustain at the safety level. Water tank level, of course, you want to maintain at a certain level. And, of course, in the factory, for example, you want to control the speed of the conveyor, okay, you still need a PID controller for that. Okay, so the popularity of PID controller can be attributed partly to their good performance in a wide range of uh, operating conditions, and partly to their functional simplifications. Okay, because it can operate in a very simple manner and straightforward because you can just tune the these three parameters, and eh, with the response of the step input as your targeted. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is the next section of this uh, of this chapter, which is on the PID controller tuning methods. So basically, there are many methods that are available to determine the acceptable value of PID gains. Okay, so the process of determining the print uh, the gains is called uh, PID tuning. Uh, okay, so a uh, common approach uh, to tune is uh, basically we can use a manual uh, manual PID tuning. Okay, but it's quite hefty because you need to manually tune. Okay. And nowadays there are many uh, available software that can be can auto tune the PID controller. Okay. Okay. So basically, we can use it by the trial and error. Okay, which a minimal an analytic analysis using a step response. Okay, or via simulation. And in some cases of testing, actually testing our system, and we can decide. The gain based on the observation or experience. Okay, I attach this the link how uh, they control the position of the meter uh, to be at a certain uh, certain level. Okay, for example, in your car, you want to maintain at the RPM three thousand, for example, and how the PID controller can be tuned to to do the the solution. Okay, you can see it after this by yourself. Okay, so uh, there's also uh, we call it the ZN tuning method, okay, which is more proper method that can be or systematic method that can be used for the PID control tuning. Okay, so it's uh, available in several variation based on what you use. Uh, it's a P, PIPD, or PID controller. And later on, in the final of the slide, I will show you how this uh, arrangement of this uh, ZN tuning methods, okay, how it will affect the system also. Okay, so uh, let's uh, uh, see on the manual tuning first. Okay, so basically the manual tuning you can always start with the to tune the KP. Yeah, 
Okay. We have P ID, but we start with a P, yeah. Okay, basically, and you will can uh, assume that KI and KD equal to zero first. Okay, this is followed by slowly increase the gain of KP until the output of the closed loop system oscillate at the edge of the instability. So as shown before, okay, when the we have a rule locus, so we tune the KP at the uh, the edge of the instability yeah, before it going to the the unstable region here this is unstable eh? this is the stable region so try to find the kp gain at this this edge okay okay uh, then the okay so after that okay you can reduce the value of kp to achieve uh, what is known as quarter one over four de amplitude decay okay this is can be done by a step response if you have the output f1 okay you can, uh, if you get the value, for example, 1000, so you can reduce to 500 first, so that you can get the response, what we call it, of a 1 uh, over 4 amplitude decay lah, at this period, okay? You will reduce over uh, 1 over 4 of the amplitude, okay? This is our the step-by-step -step, uh, response, lah, okay? Step-by-step uh, uh, -step method for the manual PID control tuning. <laughs> Okay, so the rule of thumb is uh, always you can reduce it by the half first. Okay, okay you can reduce from 1000, for example, to 500 before you tune it to more proper of uh, PD gain. Uh, okay, and uh, sorry, KP gain. Okay, so the next step uh, you can include the increase the value of KI and KD manually to get a more the most desired response okay so basically uh this is the effect of kp ki and kd gain okay what if you uh, increase the value what is the response to the system okay i try to draw here let's say you have a response what target of one here okay this is time huh? okay so this is the kp when you use a kp okay uh, it's difficult to get the targeted here it, but it will reduce in terms of steady state error okay okay but the percentage overshoot either is a positive or negative overshoot is still uh, in can increase the the overshoot uh, okay by including the kp so that you will uh, eliminate the steady state error but it will increase the percentage overshoot so mean that you will get the response like this okay okay it will increase the the overshoot here but at the end you will get a uh, none uh, steady state error this is zero steady state error okay and finally by including the kd okay which is mean you a complete pid controller to this you can get a proper response like this eh? okay because it's decreased the overshoot okay from this point it can reduce to the targeted one here and setting time also can be reduced from here to a more uh, shorter setting time, uh, like from this, can okay, setting time of two second, it is to one second, for example. Okay, okay, that's the effect of uh, tuning the PID controller. Okay, let's see this example. Okay, given this, you have a GC and GS of the system, and of course you have a disturbance here. Okay, and you have a reference output. Okay, and uh, uh, output the actual output okay so given the system is this okay where the value of b equal to 10 and the damping ratio is 0 0.707 which is the natural frequency of 4 radium second so you can replace all the values into this equation so that you will get in terms of this final form so from this you clearly get that you have a three poles okay which is 0 minus 10 and minus 5.66 okay okay so from this for the manual tuning okay you can step ki and kd is equal to zero first and we target to tune the kp first okay so this one is a solution okay you can have a solution here okay and uh, if you do in in this form you you multiply all this form you will get in terms of this value lah, which is s power of 3 plus 15.66 s power of 2 plus 
0.56s plus 0. Okay, so uh, this form is easily for you to transform in terms of transfer function uh, and the upper part is only one. Uh, okay. okay, so let's try this uh, in the MATLAB. Okay. okay, so we have this system. Okay, it's 1, 1, 15.66, 56, and 0. Okay, so you can confirm back your transfer function here and later you can plot it okay okay so this is what you get okay okay so you can see here okay the three poles zero okay minus five okay and minus ten here okay as in the previous slide lah, okay zero minus ten minus five point six okay and you can actually extract the point here. This is the edge of instability. Okay. Actually, it's quite difficult to get a proper value, but if you, but the accurate one is actually is a uh, uh, 885.5. Okay. But this one, I, I just, just uh, point it here is we get a 916. Actually, if you move, uh, it's very uh, sensitive because if move just a little bit it will give you a, a, a different value but the edge of stability actually uh, the value is 885.5 okay okay so from that okay you know that the value of kp is 885.5 here and you have a closed loop uh pulse of plus minus 7.5 j okay okay here, the value of these two actually is at the 7, okay, 7 uh, plus minus 7.5 lah, is 7.62 here, okay, but the accurate one is 7.5, okay, also same goes to the minus position, okay, so you can do a check in the step, step response, which the amplitude actually given the value of 1.9 here, and the uh, response of a one cycle, is actually 0 0.83 you can minus this uh, 1.1 minus 0 0.273 you will get this around this value lah okay okay so uh, this is the how you get it okay uh, okay so actually you can have this one a close loop okay like the right, right turn here feedback which you multiply the uh, the gain value 885.5 multiply to the system that you you uh, derived before okay so I write here so that basically you can get uh, okay you can get the value of uh, the above one is 1885.5 okay just alert that if we uh, the, the response for the kp is just for the integer there's no s okay the kp is alone so that's it only implies for the the final position only okay uh, so uh, after this we can see when we tune for the kd for example is have the s so that it will implies at this position only okay not not all the all the position okay so if we plot it okay uh, so the response you can get in top of this uh, okay if you zoom in this position usually the the amplitude is about 1.9 here okay this is i zoom it about the 4.5 seconds okay if you zoom at this uh, this is very long uh, which is uh, for uh, 14,000 seconds uh, but if you zoom more you can get this in top of this clearly uh, sine wave okay Okay, so from that, okay, okay, uh, as given before, the next step is you have to reduce in the half first, okay, to 442.75, okay, as a first step to achieve the step uh, response, which appropriately a quarter amplitude decay. And finally, after the refine, you will get the best value of Kp equal to 370. And you will get the response into like this, okay? So let's try again. When you have a system here, okay, for example, 
previously okay uh, we multiply by 885 now we multiply by the refined value 370 okay so you can see the value has been changed okay only at these locations okay and then you plot again step respond so that you will get the of this form okay so this is the value of uh, decrease amplitude where you can see the amplitude from 1.48 to 1.13 is decay by 1 over 4 okay this is what we call it the quarter uh, step uh, amplitude decay right? step response eh? okay so that's the, the the end of tuning for the kp controller okay okay the next one is how we can uh, shows you in terms of uh, effect of derivative control okay <coughs> Okay, so for the derivative control, previously we can we already get the uh, optimum KP value of 370. So that's uh, we can re directly replace to this position. Okay, and by tuning the KD, and, uh, remember that KD is previously we only had one at the uh, uh, numerator part, but KD is actually KD multiplied by S, so that it can return in this form. Okay. So the root locus shows that the close uh, loop complex uh, post move left. Eh? Okay, as we plot here, okay, as given this uh, as the successful function, okay, you will get a value of 1, 15.66, 56.56, and 370. Okay, as shown before, and the numerator you must shown because it has s here, it is the s plus zero. Okay, so one zero. Eh? Okay, so you will get in terms of this plot. Okay. So it start from this pulse as the KD is increased, it will associate with a damping ratio. Okay, as it the graph moves to the left, so the damping ratio will increase. Okay, so that's that's by the as the damping is high, so that the C also is high. So by including uh, the higher damping to the system, so the percentage of overshoot will be uh, reduced. Uh, okay, and by increase the associate. Uh, which is temperature multiplied by omega n okay this is actually the position of this which is sigma equal to uh omega n this you can go back to the slide of the passive control system okay actually when uh, increase it will move towards the zero position means that it will reduce the setting time okay setting time will be reduced and percentage of overshoot also will be reduced by the effect of the repetitive controller Okay, parameters so this is shown also in the previous table eh? okay you can go back and check okay so by using this okay uh, you can plot here okay okay maybe i can show you again okay uh, this is actually system number eight uh, so you have uh, this form strong function okay you can recheck here okay and then you can plot it so actually you will get the same response as what we have here okay okay it's uh, the same one eh? okay okay so the effect of kd actually will decrease the percentage of overshoot and settling time as kd increase to the kd uh, larger than 75 the real roots begins to dominant and the response and uh, uh, dominant, uh, the dominant response and the increasing of the KD further will be less effective. Okay, I can show you the effect of increase the KD. Okay, so we have the value of KD here. For example, we use 10. Okay, but this is what I said before when the KD is only effect at the S value, uh, position only. Okay, you multiply by 10, 10 S, and this only. At this location only effective. Okay, the others position is maintained as is it. And we try at KD equal to fifty for example. Okay, also same goes to this to position only. Okay, so we can plot the KD step response like this. Okay, okay, this is the step response. Okay, you can 
insert here the legend for example okay the blue one is kd equal to 10 and the uh, orange is kd equal to 50 so by this one also you can analyze by take the peak response here position and also the setting time okay as the kd value is increased you can see that the setting time is will be reduced okay from here okay to here and also as we target the value of one here so you can see eh, if the value is increased so that's the the we call it the negative overshoot is uh, going uh, reduce okay because in this system we are targeting the value of one so that uh, the the overshoot negative overshoot is reduced so basically okay i can show you here this one is more comprehensive one okay okay so we see the effect of uh, 10 15 and 70 here you can see that the blue one from the 10 is reduced to uh, the orange to the yellow okay as what you said if over than 75 it's not effective anymore okay if you can see when the kd is hundreds the setting time become larger back okay so so it's correct it's not effective after the 75 value okay and in terms of positive overshoot this is a uh, target of value of one even though the 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 the, the, the kd is keep uh, reducing the negative overshoot but the time is uh, become worse so that's uh, we must play around all these uh, parameters of the performance so that we must select the most appropriate value lah. so for this case even though the percent negative percentage overshoot is larger for the kp equal to 70 but into a certain time is reduced a lot so that this is the value that we must take okay of course the pid is not perfect but uh, we can take the boss the the most optimum performance okay okay so the next one is on the ziegler nicholas approach okay okay so actually uh, for the this is the last part of this lecture which is uh, just an explanation okay on the ziegler nicholas approach so there are two important pid controller gains uh, methods were published in 1942 which is by the John G. Ziegler and uh, Nichols which intend to achieve a fast response eh? which means that we have a sorry the target of uh, value of one so that you must have a fast response okay without excessive escalation eh? mean that actually from this you can get uh, like this uh, the response actually it's the same what i have uh, drawn for the pid but this is more systematic way okay okay the first approach is based on the closed loop concept which is requiring the competition of ultimate gains and ultimate period we call it a k u and t u okay this is what we have to find first before we proceed of the pid uh, controller the second method is based on the concept is running on the reaction curve which is on this response okay this curve okay so the ziegler nichols tuning methods are based on the assumed form of the models of the process but the model do not need to be precisely known okay so this means that it's very practical in the process control application mean that you don't need a very detailed model estimation roughly uh, what the estimation also will do it okay and that's why it uh, can be applied in most of the control system it suggests that the uh, zn rows to be obtained in it at the initial control design uh, followed by the design iteration and refinement of of course in any of system you can start with the this method first but of uh, another following tuning refine of the parameters is needed to achieve a more appropriate value but this one is will help you to go at this this uh, the targeted one lah, okay from you get from this for example you want to this so ZN will help you lah to go at this this final uh, results okay remember that ZN rules will not work in all plan uh, process lah, okay it can be applied but there's no guarantee that it can be 
successful okay because uh, this is uh, not um, when they uh, have published this uh, theory they will not uh, they are not uh, test it in like 1000 uh, 100000 of a system okay that's uh, basically what you do in research okay so for this uh, zn methods okay basically okay uh, okay the closed loop of zn uh, tuning methods consider system respond to a step response uh, okay what we have done for the pid lah uh, of course you want to target of the the as a step response uh, target of number one amplitude from zero okay how it uh, move okay Initially, uh, the derivative KD and derivative KI can be set as zero, same as a manual tuning method. The KP proportional can be increased slowly, okay, and until it achieve a boundary of stability. Yeah, that what we have done also for the manual tuning. Okay, okay, like this root locus. What is the value of at this position? Okay, if the system is stable enough, then you can add the integrator, the KI. Okay. So, uh, so that's uh, the open loop will have a crossing of engineering axis and we can uh, repeat the above step. Uh. And finally, you can include the KD1. This is a typical PID controller. Uh. Okay. So, actually, the gain of border of instability here okay, is called the ultimate gain. Okay. You can uh, get the value of KU here. Okay, and the period of the sustained oscillation is called a TU. So when the period you get, for example, at this period, is called a TU based on this KU value. Lah. Let's say you can get the value of KU is 1000. So this uh, period is 1 second, for example, so that you have a value of KU equal to 1000 and TU equal to 1 second. So as the KU and TU are determined so that the PID controller can be computed using the relationship as this table lah. so uh, previously kp ki and kd we directly tap into of this value for example uh, 1000 uh, 10 and hundreds but by because this we have a ku value okay we go to 1000 and tu equal to one second here so that uh, we can multiply 0 0.5 multiply by 1000 to get a more appropriate value of kp ki and kd based on the cn methods okay so this you can try is okay uh, you can compare with what we have done in manual tuning okay later on you can also compare it in uh in terms of zn methods okay okay i will leave it to you to to explore this one okay uh it can easily be done using your MATLAB software okay okay the next one is on the question okay this is another question that uh, can uh, ask for you to answer it. Okay, okay, is a similar to the previous one. Okay, because this is mostly related to your simulations uh, assignments, so that you can try also by your own to get a more uh, exposure to this uh, PID control parameter tuning. Okay, okay, I think that's all for discuss. Thank you very much.